So my original plan for the Obutto revolution was to find the most BA monitor setup on the planet and take a look at this thing from a productivity and gaming perspective all in one shot. Unfortunately, and this is a super duper first world problem, I ended up with a surround setup of three LG 31MU97 displays, which are absolutely beautiful 31 inch monitors, but uh, all add up to an ungodly 26.5 million pixel resolution that no current graphics card setup could even hope to drive in modern AAA titles. So. In my unintentional part one, I talked about productivity and comfort because dat screen real estate and dat flexibility of the setup, and you can check that one out here, while I waited for ASUS to send me three ROG Swift PG278Q gaming monitors so that I could actually play some games on the bloody thing. And by the way, that stick and throttle that you see, uh, the X55, the review of that is coming soon. You can ensure swift victory with Corsair's highly responsive, lightweight gaming mouse, their Sabre RGB. Click my face, hopefully, if Nick remembers the annotation, to learn more. So I'll start with why I picked the PG278Q out of all the 1440p monitors on the market. It features lightning fast pixel response times, a 144Hz refresh rate, NVIDIA G-Sync. Um, while I wouldn't recommend it for a pro photographer for a TN monitor, really not bad color reproduction and viewing angle the second of which is especially critical in a surround setup, and you know what, just screw it. If you want to know more about this monitor, it's great. Check out my review of it here. The next thing I'd like to address about this setup is that while the PG278Qs aren't impossible to drive, three of these suckers is still about 11 million pixels. Hardly child's play. So everything you're seeing demoed is on a very high-powered machine running an Intel Core i7-5960X 8-core Extreme Edition processor at 4.2 gigahertz, even overclocked, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, and two GTX 980 graphics cards in SLI. So with that out of the way, the first step is to gear up the cockpit with my G25 racing wheel setup. This process taught me a lot about both the versatility of the Obutto, um, I ended up moving the chair back quite a bit further, moving the foot pad down, and reducing the angle of its incline, so away from my feet. Uh, I ended up moving the wheel mount closer to me, tweaking shifter height, and then I was able to finally bolt the wheel and foot pedals onto the Revolution with the conveniently pre-drilled holes, and clip the shifter into place. And then with that down, I sat down and promptly accidentally wrenched the shifter off the mount. Not because the mount is any less secure than it ever was before, you know, when I had it clipped onto the table, but because driving in the Revolution feels truly different from driving at your desk. My usual racing game complaints will all still exist until driving cockpits with motion compensation get a lot more affordable, but with everything so securely mounted and a more car-like sitting posture, I definitely found myself falling into my real driving habits of slouching with one hand on the wheel and just throwing the shifter around into gear. So I'd recommend drilling your own holes for your shifter because accidentally pulling it off was the one complaint that I really had about this config because everything else about it is just better than doing this kind of thing at your desk. I mean, one of the reasons my G25 mostly sits in a closet is that it is so inconvenient to set up and I always end up tearing it down when I do because it takes up so much space. The Revolution takes care of that by making your keyboard and mouse much more easily accessible, something that can be a huge boon even when you are racing since so many games are a pain in the butt to navigate with the buttons built into your wheel. So my final thoughts on using the Obutto in the default racing configuration are these. This is the first time I've ever really felt like the G25's toy grade build quality is just not good enough. It takes the experience to another level, like to the point where I found myself needing to wear shoes for better control and craving force feedback pedals and a much more robust shifter unit. And just, it generally gave me an understanding of why people get really, really deep into this stuff. 
But with that said, driving has never really been my thing anyway, so the next step for me was to use the optional flight stick mount and convert to a flight sim cockpit. The whole process took about half an hour, including watching the one minute guide on Obutto's website, and involved removing the shifter mount, adding the mount on the left for the throttle portion of my X55, and mounting the joystick mount. You can put the joystick over on the right if you want, but I went with the center mount for a couple of reasons. It does make the seat a a little more difficult to get into and out of, but I find the center mount more natural and more authentic feeling with my hands on it. And I found a great solution to my complaints about the keyboard and mouse tray from my productivity video. Having it mounted on the right hand side puts more support under my mouse hand and causes it to shift around a lot less during use. It also makes the keyboard and mouse very accessible with the joystick in for games that have FPS and flight elements, so you can switch between them really quickly, and when you're done playing outright and you don't want the joystick in the way and you want to bring the keyboard and mouse a little closer, you just pull one knob off, put it aside, and you're ready to use it as a normal computer. One thing that sketched me out a little bit about all of this was the double-sided mounting ta tape that Obato expects you to use to mount your HOTAS, but I was pleasantly surprised when I simply placed the throttle down on its mount to check the location and almost couldn't get it off to reposition it. This is some serious business tape and it should hold out for a long time. So let's talk about actually using it though, right? Well, um, if you're into flight games, then all I can really say is loads of fun. And then I can try to find different ways to say loads of fun for the next couple of minutes because it's freaking awesome. I fired up Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, and an old favorite of mine, X-Wing. And everything I said about racing games definitely applies here, except to a genre of games that I generally find a lot more entertaining and interesting, even if I also suck at these. I definitely found Star Citizen a little tough to play because at this resolution, I was dipping well under 30 FPS, even at low details, but Elite Dangerous ran at over 60 FPS, which, especially with G-Sync, looks butter smooth and was just a blast to play around with. So it's time to draw my final conclusions about the Obato Revolution, because there won't be a part three to this. After my first video, I wasn't completely sold on it as a daily driver workstation. It's an okay chair on an incredibly versatile, seemingly infinitely adjustable monitor slash peripheral mount thing, which is cool, really cool, but not cool enough to justify how much space it takes up in my house. After gaming on it, I'm really trying to figure out a way to get my wife to let me keep this thing, even if I have to put it in the garage and wear a jacket when I use it. It's really, really freaking cool. Once you've done it up right with the correct displays and accessories. And if you're a racing or flight enthusiast with a couple grand to burn, then there's two things I have to say to you. Number one, can I be your friend? You seem like a pretty cool baller sort of individual. And two, don't even think about trying one of these things because your enthusiast status is about to reach newer, crazier heights and that money you had to burn, well, you won't have it anymore. So guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment on the Linus Tech Tips forum. I'm going to be monitoring that much more closely than the comments on YouTube um, for a variety of reasons, many of which will become clear in the future. One of which has to do with if you sign up for our forum, it'll be a lot easier for us to reach you given how broken the YouTube sub box is, among other things. Actually, I need to do just like a general update at some point here anyway. Um, guys, linked in the video description, we've got a link where you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. You can give us a monthly contribution if you love what we do and you want us to keep doing it. And also our Amazon affiliate code. So you change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code in it. It costs you nothing and gives us a small kickback whenever you buy stuff on Amazon. That kind of stuff helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.